I am very glad to announce that Mar- Marilyn K. Roach is on the program tonight. We'd like to welcome her to Ground Zero. Marilyn, welcome to Ground Zero. Thank you. I am, I, I'm just wondering, you know, you don't say in your bio or anything how long it took you to write this book. I know that you've been, you've written several other books prior, including a book that would be considered more like a children's book, uh, where you're, you're giving the details. How long did it take you? I mean, this is genealogies. This is all kinds of other things about the families and, and, and the accusers and everybody else. So how long did it take you to do this? I'd say about four or five years for this one, but the background uh, mass of research has been going on longer than that. There are a number of points to consider when you wonder how this began, and some people point to the to the Paris daughters because, of course, they were sick, or the, uh, not, not the Paris daughters, but of course uh, the niece it's Abigail, definitely. the daughter Elizabeth Paris is what I mean. Yeah. Um, and but what about Tatuba? She was, I mean, she was a slave, or she was an Indian. And she, yeah, she's referred to as an Indian, but she's she's their slave. Yes. Okay. Now, would, would is it true that she started this whole thing about devils and demons and convinced the girls that maybe there was a possession happening? I don't think so, but because certainly she was one of the first to be accused. Right. Actually, it was a neighbor, a, a you know English descended neighbor, who suggested that Tichuba and her husband make a counter charm to supposed witchcraft, and they followed her instructions. That's the only documented, you might say, piece of magic that she is associated with, rather than having her practicing voodoo and telling the girls spooky stories. Now, she might have been doing something else, but there really isn't any contemporary evidence of it. Then it sounds like there are others that nobody knows about out there, and people start wondering who else around here could be in Satan's pocket. Right. You cry words against my wife. It will be the end of you. I am but God's finger, John. If he would condemn Elizabeth, she would be condemned. Knowing the show, I mean, we're kind of a paranormal investigative type of show. And uh, I was also fascinated that uh, they allowed in the court... And, and, and uh, you know, sometimes they allow it now, very rarely, spectral evidence in the court. Is that? Uh, yeah, that that's what really shouldn't have been done. Uh, spectral evidence being when one of the bewitched people who are, I'm putting air quotes around bewitched. Okay. So they think they are. Uh, they see something invisible. Is it a spirit or is it their imagination? If it is a spirit, is it the person it looks like or is it a more, a less benign one? Well, a, a definitely an unbenign one in disguise trying to look like the neighbor who seems to be attacking them invisibly. Let's go now to uh, Jim in Portland, Oregon. You're on Ground Zero. Go ahead. But I had a friend who was a psychic healer years ago, and he said that... Uh, his grandmother was executed there in um, Salem for being a witch, and he said definitely they got the right person. <laughs> definitely they got the right person? What, was she a witch, really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Okay, hey, stop for one minute, Jim. I, I, uh, Jim, stop one minute. Marilyn, do you think there were any chance that someone was tried for witchcraft that really was practicing witchcraft at that time? Uh, well... <laughs> Let's just say I, I haven't found evidence of it, but uh, I think some of the stories, like a fish story, got enlarged a bit. Yeah. Which, you know, and if you, and if you brag about anything, that could backfire, too. See, because I've always heard, that, you know, what Jim had to say about the uh, the idea that, you know, somebody was tried and they really were practicing, which is, yeah. that, was, that was always a theory, but it never produced evidence. There was never evidence to show that anyone that was accused hanged or otherwise uh, killed, tortured, or what have you, was really a witch. It was just all hysteria. In a world ruled by fear. Judge Hawthorne has condemned 14 more people to the jail and promise hanging if they don't confess. Confess? To what? All it takes to be condemned. Anyone breathe a word and I will come to you in the black of some terrible night and I will bring with me a pointy reckoning that will shudder you. Is to be accused. In the times of the Salem witch trials, there were governors that were complicit in carrying out um, a lot of these atrocities, and a lot of judges that were also, uh, I guess you could call them, um, 
complicit in a way. John Hathorne was one of those judges. Uh, he was a merchant and a magistrate in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and he's best known for his role as one of the leading judges in the Salem Witch Trials and the only one who ever, actually who never repented of his actions. He was also a merchant, uh, and uh, he uh, actually was a ancestor of writer Nathaniel Hawthorne. You have the writer Nathaniel Hawthorne, but you have other people who are very talented as well that have seemed to have descended from the Hawthorns. One in one person in particular is Jake Sepechi, who is in studio tonight. He is uh, he plays in the band Ceremonial Castings. So we're so glad to have you on the program tonight. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for having me. So I guess you know when you look back at your history, and uh, and and now you're in a death metal band. Yeah, it's uh, fitting, huh? <laughs> I just I'm just wondering, <laughs> you know, did that influence you to, to to choose that kind of music to get involved? Uh, you know, growing up. Um, I grew up about an hour outside of Salem in Massachusetts. Um, all my family is from there. And uh, the, you know, we were told uh, as children that of our descend, you know, descendants and, and the, the Salem stories. And of course, over there, they teach it in school. Um, so I was always very interested in that subject, especially the Salem trials. And uh, along with that, you know, of course, came my obsession with everything and anything horror or cult. And uh, so, yeah, I think it definitely, in a way, um, it's led me in the direction to where I am now. When were you first told the stories? I mean, was this family talking near yeah. the fireplace or yeah, was it? it uh, <laughs> the I mean, fire, I, I, yeah. I, I just picture you as a little boy, you know, yeah. you know, you're, you don't have long hair. You're just this little kid with short hair. You're sitting with these wide eyes next to the fire and they're all telling you, let me tell you this story yeah, right. about the witches yeah. that died. And, yep. and you're like... This is cool. Yeah. And then you yeah, go well, off and watch Scooby Doo. You know, that's, yeah. how, that's what I would do. Right. right? Yeah. Um, at the time, uh, you know, when we were told, I'd, I, I would probably, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, something like that. So I was old enough to understand. And um, it was that I was told that um, when the subject at, at, in our English class came up, we were starting to read The Crucible. And uh, when I brought the book home, my, you know, my mother, which is the side that uh, leads back to the Hawthorns, uh, sat me down and told me. Um, her grandmother's maiden name is Hawthorne. Um, and then, uh, you know, her bloodline leads back to Nathaniel and then, of course, Judge John Hawthorne. So, um, yeah, it was always just kind of neat to know that your bloodlines came from some sort of crazy history. Right. And uh, I, I don't think in any way it affected me negatively at the time. I just thought it was neat. I think in those times, uh, people were more um, subject to their beliefs uh, and, and held more strong to um, what they were told and what they believe. And I think, um, if anything, they were scared uh, to see something they haven't seen before. Um, you know, others speculate that maybe it was an act and it just gone too far, mm -hmm. like, like we see in the media. And um, I'm not sure if you've ever actually visited Salem. Um, I haven't. I'd love to. You should. I've been there uh, quite a few times, and I can tell you that there's an energy there um, that it's not. It's like nowhere else. It's just something that you feel just by being there. And uh, you know, maybe in those days that there was still that same energy. The whole sense of which you know uh, what people see it is, is through the media. You know, uh, uh, an illusionist. You know, magic is an illusion, uh, a card trick, uh, sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. what a, uh, what a real witch is is not any of those things. Um, and and to say that what they're practicing, I, I, from my own perspective and and uh, thoughts are, it's not about magic so much as it is about uh, spirituality and healing and. Uh, it's a magic aspect, but it's not the magic that we as humans know today. The Wizard of Oz actually was the first time uh, we saw a witch with a pointy nose, a pointy chin, green face, and a pointy hat. That before then they were just considered, they were they were depicted as old hags, mm -hmm. or like in uh, what Snow White, yep. that she was you know she disguised herself as an old hag. But in reality, witches 
prior to this this whole way of uh, characterizing them were actually sexy. Mm. They were considered sexy. They were very alluring. They were very uh, beautiful women. You're in Oz. I'm Theodore the Good Witch. Where's your broom? You don't know much about witches, do you? Do you mind? I'm talking to my demon. Sorry. We just think you're really interesting. Oh, I'm going places. Do you want to come in the back with us? You know, I don't know. Hence if, uh, the word bewitching. Yes, you know? exactly. They were bewitching, and they, they like, uh, and and they were uh, great seductresses and all mm-hmm. this other stuff. They knew the magic of, you know, sex magic. They knew it all. And I and I'm sitting here thinking to myself. You know, I don't remember seeing a depiction of a witch with a with a pointy nose, green face, and and a pointy chin flying around on flying a broom. around on a broom. Yeah. I, I never saw that prior to the Wizard of Oz. I don't. I I, I got to agree with you. I I don't think I have either. Of course, that was far far before my generation. But um, yeah, you know, uh, my fiance comes from from witch blood. She's a healer. She's a veterinarian herself, and I think. There's a line of of people that come from people who practiced that uh, have that sense of spirit in them, that that sense of energy, and um, you know I, I know there's a lot of people out there today that still practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just I feel you know the the word witch is kind of a a term for something misunderstood in many ways. Uh, I wish there was another term. Thank <laughs> you.